Right, we're recording now. All right, guys, welcome back to Relegation Battle. After a long week of club action, uh, I think the best place to start is Palace versus Spurs, since oh, George is joining us this week. We'll start with the Palace side of things. George, about two weeks ago, we talked about the situation with Al-Zahar. He's come yeah. back to beat West Brom 5-1 and got a point against Spurs, but it was Gaeta who got most of the plaudits from that game. So what did you think about it? I thought it was a very exciting game of football, to be honest. Um, I think Tottenham's tactics plays into our hands. And um, I thought um, in the second half, we might have been able to push on and get all three points. But Tottenham had their chances as well. Um, but I think the sitters in the second half from Schlupp and Benteke, I think they should you should be bagging those, to be honest. But saying that, like I said, Tottenham had their chances and Gaeti was on form. Um, yeah, apart from the mistake, yeah, he was he was banging in goal. I think he's been one of the best keepers in the Prem since he's arrived, to be honest, and he's been a bit under the radar, and no one's been mentioning it. I hear him talk about the Bravka from Newcastle, Henderson, obviously at Sheffield United, but I think he's been up there, to be honest. And if you look at his um, stats from the last few seasons, his save ratio percentage is actually really high. It's in the top five. So, uh, yeah, I think people start need to start talking about him. And, Yesterday, because he was on TV, he's getting applauded now. So I think that's good on him, to be honest. Um, and yeah, also the Zaha and Ezzy link up, I thought that was absolutely beautiful yesterday. It was good against um, West Brom as well. Um, obviously, people are talking a lot about um, Kane and Son, but I think yesterday, people to be talking about, yeah, was Zaha and Ezzy. I, I don't know about you, Tom, but I thought Son and Kane weren't really up to it yesterday, apart from the goal. Yeah, I agree, not going to lie. Um, yeah. I wanted Kane more on the ball, to be honest, but he just couldn't get out of it. Yeah, I saw Son got voted man of the match on the fancy football app, but I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. But That's I because thought, a lot of people got him in their dream team. Yeah, but yeah, I thought, I thought Ezzy was the best player on the park yesterday, quite a long way. I thought, yeah, he gave um, Zaha the freedom the freedom to find space and last season and the season before a lot of the times Zaha was getting doubled up on and it, teams are fighting us out and this season you can see seven goals to two assists he's already got better stats than last season and I think that's partly to do with Ezzy um, so yesterday whenever Ezzy got the ball head up straight away and I think I saw he had more passes to Zaha than any other Palace player and that's exactly what we need to be honest he's got a head up looking for our best player on the pitch they're the two that are going to make it work for us this season. And to be honest, we signed him for 15 million. And I think if a club were going to come in for him, I don't think they will. We won't sell. But I think already he's he's at least doubled his value. At least. I think he's been amazing. And um, another thing, actually, after the game, um, Mourinho's usually very, um, yeah, got a lot of praise for Palace. He always says good things about us and our fans and whatnot. But, after the after the game, he was saying all we did was punt the ball forward. I don't think that was the case at all. I don't know about you, Tom, but I thought we played some good football yesterday. And um, especially in some spells, I thought we played you off the park. I'm not saying you didn't play good football. I thought you did. You you had a better team in the first half, I must admit. But I think in the second half, we, we were on top. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I like Mourinho. I've always said if... If Palace were going to get any manager in the world, I want him because the tactics he plays is exactly what we do: counter attacking football, try to hit teams on the attack. So, um, so yeah, that's about it. Actually, no. Special shout out to Jeffrey Schluck. Jeffrey Schluck. Um, I think every single week he plays with his heart on the sleeve, and he leaves hundred percent on the pitch week in week out, and he doesn't really get mentioned a lot, but. Yesterday, he popped up with a goal. And he usually does, to be fair, every now and then he does pop up with a goal. And I think this season, he's been excellent on the right with Nathaniel Klein. So, yeah, he's been a major boost for us this season, Klein. Yeah. That's oh, it, just Joel. Before we move on. Huh? That's, yeah, that's all I've got to say on that well, game. Before we move on to the Spurs, I will bring back to one point about Zaha and Eze. Do you think that will take a lot of pressure off Zaha to like, almost be the main guy at Palace to create everything through him? Mm. Just have that little almost a partner next to him now that will make yeah. him play better with no pressure yeah I, I, to be honest they both look on the same wavelength all the time as well they know it, they've only played what five or six games together this season 
but it's like they've been playing together for three or four seasons. Yeah, Come, they will come to the Tottenham side. Uh, after three big games, where you got big results in them. Is it a bit disappointing to lose two points away to Palace? I mean, it's disappointing, but I knew I knew it was going to be a tough game anyway. Like any time someone says we're going to go through Palace, I never back it because. <clears throat> I don't know if this is just a Tottenham team when we play, uh, play Palace or if it's just everyone because they're a, quite a good team. But every time we play Palace, it's always a, such a tight game. Like It's either a draw or the other team win it by one goal. It always happens. Um, to be honest, yeah. to finish, you usually get the better of us. but Yeah, look, I don't know. It's a bit... The only one time that I thought we got a better of you was when I went and that was last year. Um, and um, the season, the first game at the London Stadium as well. You you battered us that day. The London Stadium. Oh no, not the London Stadium. Your, your new stadium. stadium. Yeah, yeah, your new stadium. Yeah. But yeah I but think you beat us three one that day. Great. Yeah, you but that was still though. tight. And if I remember rightly, Schlapp scored that game as well. I think. I'm not too sure. No, I can't remember. Um, but yeah. It, it is disappointing, but obviously Chelsea... I say Chelsea dropped points, which they did, but then even though that's good for us, it was still an advantage we could have taken. And then obviously we didn't know about Liverpool. I was expecting Liverpool to win and Fulham absolutely battered them in the first half. I don't know if you watched it. They absolutely dominated Liverpool. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a bit annoying. I feel like it was literally a, the opposite. So... It was like a game of two halves where we uh, dominated Palace, had our chances in the first, and then it was literally the opposite. In the second half, they dominated us and had their chances. So I think a draw is a fair result. It was just the fact mm. that I felt like we were a bit unlucky considering we were we were one new up. So we're in control of the game in a way. And then Lloris does a mistake. And then we also get a very good chance, a couple of good chances at the end to nick it. And Guaita's has made, like, these ain't just normal saves. They were world-class saves he made. I, w- I would forget about the mistake he actually made because they were world-class saves. So, here's what it is. Yeah, but, I, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. But do you know what? With, with Guaita, here and there, he does have the odd mistake in him. Not very often, maybe once every half season or whatever, but he will have a mistake in him. But Everyone more often than not, yeah, more often than not, though he he's on the ball every single game. Yeah, most keepers are like that, though. Very the best Spanish keeper in a Prem. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, I guess I'm too happy about that one. <laughs> so we'll move on to United now. But before we go to the derby game, we'll go to the midweek game you guys had. Obviously, Jack is just putting now the only English team who didn't finish up their group into the Europa League now as well to make it even worse. It was a weird on the lights of the game because he went in five at the back when you, did, you guys needed a draw so maybe that was a reason but what did you make of that performance against Leipzig? Yeah, it was very nice. I said on last week's show that it all depends on how we start and we concede in the first two minutes and when you play five at the back because we only need a draw going 1-0 and then 2-0 down very early on. That's just game over. I know the thing it's annoying because we deserve to lose. However, even with that, we had chances to get a draw even win it. Going mm. back to Bruno's free kick that hit the crossbar. The last minute own goal shout that nearly went in. Um, what was another one? Um, their goalkeeper made fantastic saves. There were just so many chances that would have got us a point even though we didn't deserve it. So it was a bit annoying and especially going to Istanbul the first game, needing a point, didn't get it. PSG, needing a point, didn't get it. Leipzig, needed a point, didn't get it. So that was very frustrating. But now you're Open League. Um, I'm sure you'll go on to it later in the show, but we're going to Europa League and we're all thinking, yeah, we're going to play Farmers, but we get an actually tough Tough, tough draw against Real Sociedad but I think that's what we need at the moment some hard games because at the moment we've not been great so like you said the only English team to go and well not win their group 
So it's a bit annoying, but we're still in Europe, still a chance to win a trophy. Yeah. Well, Champions League tour did happen today. So you've got Man City versus Borussia Mönchengladbach. Lazio vs Bayern, Atletico Madrid vs Chelsea, Leipzig, Liverpool, Porto, Juventus, Barca vs PSG, first time since that 6-1 game as well has happened, Sevilla, Dortmund and then Atlanta vs Real Madrid. And Jack, like you said, you got Real Sociedad in the next round. Uh, we got Benfica, Spurs got Wolfsburger, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess Real Sociedad, top of the Top La Liga right now as well, top scoring in the league as well, I believe. I mean, I know you said you wanted a hard game, but at the same time, are you a bit worried that you could get knocked out a bit early? I mean, there's always a worry, but I mean, we've done it quite a few times, even in the Champions League. I'm going back to Sevilla a couple of years ago when we got absolutely humiliated home and away. Um, so there's always a chance. However, we still do have quality players. But sometimes we do rely on an individual brilliance. brilliance. So I'm wary, but I'm still confident we will go through. I just didn't expect that hard a draw, especially when obviously we're seeded. But yeah. Yeah, then obviously as well on the weekend, Manchester Derby. How do you look at it? Was it just a boring game because of poor attacking, or was it just good defending from both teams? I'd probably go more to say it was just poor. I mean, there was good defensive stuff, but it was just... We hardly created anything. I mean, when, when they did, they didn't hardly get any shots on target. They put it, they missed most of their chances. So, it was good defending, but there was some poor attacking on display. I mean, we got a penalty, but then it was offside. We, we created most of our chances through set pieces, which we don't normally do. And yeah, I don't remember De Gea or even Edison making a save that's very noticeable. So it was kind of a dull game, very. Had nil nil written all over it before the game. Yeah, I think the only chance, like big chance, to remember is that Morris on the first half yeah. made a great put into him, but that was a very poor finish from him. Expected to fail. But I guess that is a decent point for you guys, especially after the week you had as well. You know, he's at home. Then. I mean, all of us lost points this week, and I guess go to Chelsea next. Ty, you were a bit wary going into the Everton game as well, away at home, away from home, sorry. Mm-hmm. Then, I mean, we all knew Everton were a threat this season, but at the same time, Pickford isn't having the best season at the same time. So, how did you look at that game? Um, <clears throat> I wasn't surprised. Like, when I saw the, um, the lineup come out and we had no wingers, which I didn't expect anyway. Um, I just because I put in our other group chat that we were probably going to lose this game, <laughs> and then obviously like other Chelsea fans are saying we were going to win and all that, and I don't know why they were so confident because whenever we go to Everton, we do usually lose. Like the only two times we've won there recently um, is when we've actually gone on to win the league. So yeah, I don't think we were terrible. It was just like we didn't have any um, cre- creativity out wide. Like Havertz isn't a winger. And I guarantee people are going to start laughing about habits. But, um, you know, he needs, I think he, he does need more time after he had COVID and that. And obviously he's playing out of position. But I don't blame Lampard because we didn't really have a choice because obviously Hudson, Adoy, Ziyech and Pulisic were all out. Pulisic's fit now, apparently. So, but yeah, that was always my one negative from the transfer window. Obviously we had a good window, but I think we should have signed um, a fourth winger, like just in case something like this did happen and we didn't do it. So, yeah, I wasn't surprised, but I mean, just the penalty, I don't know what Mendy was thinking, but you know, everyone makes mistakes, so I'm not going to moan at him too much. I think Thiago Silva could have dealt with it better as well at the start, but yeah, man, it happens. And then obviously Lampard said that he doesn't understand why managers like Klopp we're saying we were title favourites, and neither do I really. But yeah, it was a disappointing result, and we need to bounce back tomorrow, I believe. I think that's when they're playing. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, on the winger situation as well, I mean, played one out wide a couple of times now. Abraham's always the option. Giroud's been firing goals, he's option now. Then also Havertz, last season he got most of the goals, and it's just playing at striker in the second half of the season. 
for Leverkusen. So mm. is it also a worry that you have too many strikers in a sense? Um, no, not really, because Werner, I don't think he's been terrible out wide. I think he's just missed a few sitters. But um, the thing about Giroud is, like, every time, like, every time he comes in for the first game, he'll be fine and, like, he'll score two, three goals or something. And then it's the games after where he drops off. I think that was his problem at Arsenal sometimes as well. Like, he'd just be really inconsistent. Um, but, yeah, I don't think we have too many strikers because... Two years ago, um, our strikers were literally like Morata and Higuain. So I'd rather have like four decent strikers than two average ones. But yeah, I don't think we have too many because they can play in different positions. So yeah. Do you think Werner yeah. enjoys playing out wide? No. 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 I don't if it was up to me, he just all I want. This is my one wish this season. I've wanted this since like August. I want to see Ziyech, Werner, Pulisic, and then Havertz behind. But yeah. They all just keep picking up injuries at weird times. So Havertz needs to play in that Delhi Ali, um, 2017-2018 role. That's where I see him as, to be honest. Yeah, this I man, said he was clock. a Delhi Ali player. That's why I think he's going to struggle for this league. Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm well, still going mean, to give him time. But we'll see. Speaking of Delhi Ali, Tom, it does seem like he's going to leave in January. How do you feel about that? I don't mind it as long as it's alone. Yes, I'm talking about him coming Palace on them. Yeah, you can have him online. No, I don't I want him. him. I want him back when Mourinho gets sacked. He, he, Schlupp will keep him, keep him out of the team. So, <laughs> so Deli Ali can go have like a two-year spell somewhere and then when Mourinho gets sacked or whenever he resigns, then he can come back. I mean, when he comes he to, to PSG at some point? Yeah, yeah, that's where we think he will go on loan. But we will see. Yeah, fair enough. Then, of course, Sheffield with Arsenal as well. Fourth straight home defeat as well, not good enough. But again, I want to say we're 15th, maybe 16th. No, you are 15th, I think. 15th, there we go. Can't, I don't know if that's quite ideal for me. It's quite depressing. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only person I can really defend, I think, is Tierney and probably Gabriel. The rest of them, Gabriel was shit. Gabriel, I thought it was shit. Yeah, I thought it was. Probably you know, you know that oh, Chris Wood chance. Yeah, but... yeah. Oh yeah, I thought. Oh, oh, I thought. I didn't know you meant the whole season. No, 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 no. I was like the last few games, like Tierney and Gabriel, they've been like the ones who are still trying a bit, you know. Yeah. And that's the problem that we, I'm actually like based on just trying now, which that should be like the bare minimum of anything, which is the big problem, but. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like I said, was it last week or two weeks ago? Like, you have to change, you can't, it is easy to change one manager than say 11 players, 15 players, but at some point you are going to have to change them because they are the problem. Like, Jacker, you guys know how to love Jacker, but he's, you can't be doing that, especially after Pepe has done it as well. Like, it just doesn't make sense to us always thinking, oh, then he was lucky to stay on the pitch as well because he's like Superman punch Tarkowski. I think that's a record, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but... He's put two hands on his face. Yeah, I don't know how it wasn't a red card. Yeah, and then, I mean, I think some credit does have to go to Burnley as well. Like, I know we still lost, and that's going to be the main thing, but Pope made a couple of good saves. There were a couple of offline clearances as well. So, like, we can't say we're, we're completely shit. It was, we have seen the worst performances, like the Villa one, but at the same time, you can't be losing at home to Burnley. Like drawing against Burnley at home is bad enough, but losing, it's not really much to say on that. But... He needs mm-hmm. to get a sack. How many times has Shaka let Arsenal down, by the way? So yeah. many times. Yeah, I think he's been booked 43 times, I think, since he's come in. He, he, even <laughs> against us when he threw his shirt on the floor, I thought, I thought yeah. that was going to be the end of him. There's I mean, that's no the way. thing. Like, Arteta gave no him way. another chance, yeah. but then yeah. he's just gone and done this. So... Yeah. And then good like news. There's, the no well. uh, there's no way a Palace player would do that and would work, welcome him back. There's no way that would happen. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he can't play now because if he plays him again, and after what he's done to Kenduzi, send him out on loan, like almost send him away from the squad, you do have to question out there a bit in that sense because it's completely unfair on him. Because yeah, Are you going to play, gonna play instead? Because like, party's out. Who else, who else have you got? It's going to have to be El Nenny and Sabayas probably, or Kate Maitland-Niles here. So it's not, it's not going to get any better. 
So you've got Assassin, you've got Jokers. Will, yeah, will you play Willock in there? Oh, sorry, George. Willock. Uh, Willock's a weird one because he's good, like on the ball. He can drive forward, but uh, is that that final end product that he's still missing a bit? I think. I think he panics. Is he a bit good enough? Don't you think he w- he would have a point to prove though? He's something he might be worth giving a go. Yeah, I think there's a lot of youngsters who should be giving a go. Like Reese Nelson should be giving a go. I think Willock is oh, one of them. In Europa League, they've been they have been in the job, but I think Willock he just panic like because he started a couple of Prem games or come on at least and he just panics right at the end of it. But he doesn't do that in Europa League, which is really different. So, and that's another problem. We're we're having to put so much pressure on our youngsters now because when Marchioni comes back, he, there's so much pressure on him right now because we need him to perform well like he was before. So, I'm not sure what it is thinking for a Southampton game now. Because they're fourth right now, and we got Everton after that away, City in the cup, Chelsea. and then Chelsea at home as well. Yeah. So it's not a good run for us at the moment. Oh, no. I, I don't know how it's going to pan out, but I think after Southampton, <laughs> not in the game, just after the squad's released, I think most people will probably have their mind made up about it, depending on who he puts out. Yeah, how how long do you actually give him now? Because you're fifteenth, right? It's that just. Is it. I mean, even <laughs> Fulham are hitting form now. <laughs> you look a bit no, I'm back his, I'm back no, I don't get still, But the thing is, he does have to do a man management as well. So, I don't think Bellerin should play now. I think Melan now has to get his opportunity, especially after how he's doing in Europe as well. I'm fine with holding because the problem with holding is he has no protection from Bellerin. So, he's just left a little with the wing at normally a striker. So, that's why I don't mind him there. I don't know what's going on with the whole Saliba situation, but it seems like he's going to go out on loan on the matter what now. Whether that, I think he's just trying to almost outlast Arteta in that sense, saying Hopefully he doesn't know. Hopefully he to be good. I mean, I I've only seen him play once in preseason, but uh, at the same time, I remember Arteta didn't sign him with Emery, so maybe yeah. Arteta isn't really a fan of him at the same time. But yeah, it's very bad time for us, but... but how can he not be a how can he not be a fan of him if he hasn't even given him a chance? So like training, yeah, yeah training, yeah. Maybe it doesn't yeah, work maybe. hard enough. Yeah, that's true. To be fair, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a like, good Christmas period for us. But what? So you don't think he should be sacked? No, because it's the place no, that is the problem. Because well, it's the same place yeah. under Wenger who let him down. Emery as well. Like, I know Emery had his like his own other problems as well, but it's the same place if he didn't perform under Emery as well. So if we sack Arteta, next six months, new manager comes in, yeah, they'll perform for him because they want to start for him. And then yeah, the same Joel, will happen again. If you think about it, right, this is obviously I don't give a shit because it's the best thing for me. I mean I'm, yeah. I'm I'm loving it, but I don't care. But if that was me, I'd be wanting him out, and I probably would have wanted him out quite a while ago because if you think about it, when he came in last year. That cup he got, he got you, he went on a cup run and he, that papered over the cracks for me because when when you actually played your Premier League games, you still weren't playing. Like You got a couple of good wins. I think you were doing better against the harder teams, but you were still losing games. So you shouldn't yeah. have. And then us, this year, I, I, basically, you are not... I know your team is not great. For an Arsenal football club, it's not. Right, but you cannot tell me that that team of players he has got is a 15th place team. You should be in yeah. top <coughs> seven, not yeah, let alone saying, top like, 10, top seven. We should be better than 15th, but you've got to look at the players. We said it last season as well, though. The players are rubbish, and we, I, I think I even said on here, if we didn't have a Bamiang's goals, we would be in a relegation battle. A Bamiang hasn't scored, and look where we are. It's the same players, it's the same problem, though. So, if we change manager, not the players, it's going to keep coming up until we replace the players. That's the thing. So The problem is, you can't, at, that is going to take you like four transfer windows, if you're saying this. Yeah, that's what You've got to be patient there, don't you? Like, you can't, <laughs> nothing's going to happen like that. But then, yeah, but would you not rather is, get a manager? You're, you're, yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. You're risking yeah. it on a manager who is, this is his first job, right? Chelsea exactly. have done it with Lampard, but they gave him like a year where there's no pressure and he's done so well. So, he's got it. To be fair, Arteta got you a cup, right? But the thing is, 
when you do this bad, wouldn't you want a manager where you can say, right, he's got experience. We get him the players. We know he'll do well. Whereas if you get in the players now, you don't know if they will do well under Arteta because he hasn't had that experience. He hasn't proven it yet. He, well, obviously, because it's the start of his managerial career. Yeah, but I, th- I think that FA Cup almost got him that, you know what, you can have a chance now. I think that earned him the right at least to have a chance of getting his players in, getting that cup run with these players because we did have to beat City, we had to beat Chelsea in the final as well. So that has Two to games. earn him some credit. Hasn't he yeah, only had like, had one transfer window, maybe two? Yeah, this summer, January, January, just January. Like Cedric. I yeah, think so he's amazing. Had one transfer window. You got to give him at least to next. See who signs next summer. And if, if next the season 15th. starts, that's the fifteenth. Yeah, that's <laughs> this, this is the fifteenth. Like that's fucking our, squad. That's him in our position. You can't keep changing managers. You're, no, you're, don't compare it to Man United. You've you're never a year gone this behind deep. everyone. You've never gone this deep. They're, it's December. It is December. And they're fifteenth. I get that, but if you watch some of those games, they're actually playing quite good. They're just not creating anything because they have no creative players. I don't think they've been playing good. They they've got no creativity, Jack. Exactly. What can can he do? Score. So yeah, but whose choice, who's choice is it to leave out the creative player? Was it his or was it Arteta's? Ozil is not what you want at Arsenal right now, though. Ozil's but not what you want. He'll make the whole thing you, worse. How can you expect him to do patterns of playing with, without um, creative players? He needs creative players. Once he get them, he, he was supposed to get our. He didn't get him. He's clearly, he's only got a few of his players. He's, he's not getting back. I mean, to be fair, Emily yeah. didn't really get back. It's just they're bored. But until he gets... Like, until he's going to have creative players, yeah, you can say Ozil, but... How can they create without creative players? You're really yeah. Willian, on a manager, Willian is no kind of creative, though. I'm not really... I get that, There's... but a manager with experience doesn't 100% give you wins. Doesn't 100% give you trophies. No, but I would expect him to be higher. Basically, I would expect him to be in a bloody top 10. So was it not Emery, They're Arsenal then? Football Club. Was Emery not that manager experience? He's had years at Sevilla, years at PSG. Was it not the same yeah, but He didn't have you in 15th. We were we weren't that far off though. Yeah, they were. Like how close the table is right now? Like, it's not like there's a massive gap between us and say. Yeah, but when uh, when was he? Well, I and don't he know. He was given a couple windows as well. Here, I want him out. As simple as that. Yeah, yeah I think. Say, all right, I right, say this then. Jack said you weren't backed. Are you definitely going to get backed in January or the next summer? No. Well, there we go. So, where, where do we yeah. go from here then? It's just yeah, a long exactly, cycle. But, but yeah, 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 just just continue there. Board. You got to sell. Exactly. We must necessarily continue to build a team, even if it's bit by bit per window. Rather, than a new manager has to get completely back a lot in one window again at the start, to get his a little bit of his players in. Otherwise, it's going to be the same cycle over and over again. If you need stick with our and, leaders. and then you don't get in, he don't get back. You will continue to decline. Would you not rather just have a manager that can um, work with what he's got? Like, like when Pop first went to Spurs. can't work with these players, yeah, though. He, like, he do, the players aren't three managers right? you've had with these players. But they've never done as bad as what Arteta's done. Yeah, I mean, look at the performance there. Can you really put down Arteta where you see these players play like that? Well, he's playing them. But who else can yeah, play? I just well, you might as well skip I, the youth for chance or something. Like, fan, I'd be got nothing to lose. Miles every game. I think he's a good player. I don't know how he don't get into your team. That he just started using um, Balogun as well. Is that his name? That yeah. young striker. I was also he's, going he's only just the back. started though, Terry. So you probably do a better job than that. Yeah. yeah, so Tom made a good point there saying that Arsenal should go back to the far of the back. And I, I actually agree with that because last season... Arteta, look, this is where I gave praise to Arteta. He looked at his squad and looked, okay, my defence is shit. I'll put more defenders so we can defend well. And then once we get the ball, we can counter and attack in numbers with the wing backs. And then, obviously, what you do, you bring in the centre back. But then now his defence is still shit. So we should again look at it and go, right, I've even I've got another centre back. However, my defence is still shit. So I should again go back to five at the back and look to get another centre-back in January. But it just gave me that more 
It gave you a more solid base to work on attacking. And you hardly conceded that many. Obviously, you conceded a few still, but you, can, you didn't concede that many lo- end of last season. And like Tom said, you went on that cup run, you beat the likes of Chelsea, City in the semi final final. So, and Liverpool, no, sorry, Liverpool in the final. So, yeah, I think that's actually a good point for Tom. I think you should go back far the back. What do you think? Now, um, expanding on what you just said, Jack, um, I think Arsenal do need a centre back, but just not any old centre back. They need a leader in there. They need a captain. That's what they need. They've got no one to get the boys' heads up. And if you look at in that group, right, they're not. They might not be buying into Arteta, right? But there's no one. In, there's no one. Yeah, probably in that group that are saying to them, yeah, look, boys, get our heads up. We'll play for the manager. There's no one doing that. You think Shaka's doing that? No way. You think Bamyang's doing that? No way. There's no way. And if yeah. you look at Shaka's starting every week, you think after what he done against us, he's a good example to the boys. No way. Yeah, I think the only player showing, showing that sort of like desire is Tierney, to be honest. But even though, like, I think you agree, I think we can't go find the back anymore because our defenders just, like, aren't even good enough to do that. Because if you look at the players who are like in the media like rebelling against Arteta, it's like Mustafi and Luis, or like Socrates, one of these players. All these players Arteta wants to sell, which I think is why they're acting like this. They know Arteta wants them out, but they're not good enough. So, if you're going to fight the back, it's likely, likely going to be with Louise, isn't it? And I don't know why... Louise is good in the back five, though. He's not... He's, I don't rate him like that. But like, he, shouldn't yeah. be, he shouldn't be playing after that City game at the end of the last, like, start of restart last season. I don't know mm. why some people change their minds, but like, he's still not good enough when he, when, when he plays. Yeah, one or two good games, but it's not good enough still from him. He's dead wood. He's other wood. Hmm? He's other teams dead wood. He's, he's shit. Yeah. Welcome. You're welcome, by the way. Yeah. Chelsea had screwed us over with William as well. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he's going to set up against Southampton, but I think it's probably the biggest game so far for him in terms of like keeping his job. Joel, like you say, like obviously, I agree with you some aspect. Like, in not just the managers, the players. But obviously, as a fan, even though I'm saying you've got to give them time, they does get a point where you're like, right, that's enough, that's it. So, yeah. as an Arsenal fan, how many months, how many more games is it until you go right? We have played shit in the last. I'm just no. I'm just giving examples. If it's months, if it games, if it stays, I'll give them an hour. Long, <laughs> how long do you think how long are you going to give them if it, say until if we don't win January? if we don't win a game until say yeah the start of January then I might have to because like at some point even if, even if I do back him you do have to get a result at the end of the day isn't it so I would like to give him until like March because then he may have been back in January and he may have just got his players in and start to perform a bit better maybe do well in Europe as well, but if, say if we don't win a game before January, then it, I think that is just too worrying for me even as well. So, I don't know what we do majorly after that, but I think that would have to be like a cut off for me. Yeah, I think he needs eight points from his next five, at least. Mm, yeah. I don't know who you've got. You see. Oh. they got a toughish run. Well, Southampton's going to be tough anyway, so... Yeah, they've got Everton, Everton Chelsea... They've got us. West Brom, Brighton. that's, that's, you know, that's a tough game for you lot. Relegation. Yeah. Exactly, that's a six-pointer. Six no? um, yeah. Ty, you did drop points against West Brom. <laughs> so, we're going on a relegation battle, are we? But you did struggle as well, so... You struggled against him too. Did we not win? Did you struggle? Yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah, carry on, Joe. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What another like, West Brom? You know where to look. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> we won as well, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if we beat City in the cup as well, I'll be happy. But I, I want to see league wins now, isn't it? Huh? If you do, if that, if that's what City, that will just be papering over the cracks. Yeah, oh, beat a big team, but yeah. Yeah, I just want a league win right now. To be honest, more than anything. But yeah, I think any wait and see if happens on Wednesday, the big game. 
And yeah, uh, I think Tom mentioned earlier, Fulham drew against Liverpool. Yeah. Fulham played really well in that game. Uh, VAR again had a, I feel like a few mistakes. Like Fulham deserved a penalty. Yeah, first uh, I, 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 I didn't, see, I didn't watch the game, but I saw. Where the hell I did saw he touch the ball? That um, no, he touches the ball, but after mm, he literally kicks, it. he kicks it. He oh kicks yeah, through after, his leg. But yeah. when you yeah, yeah, after yeah. So I don't know. The the VAR must. I didn't. I obviously I didn't watch the game. So I don't know what angles the referee looked at, but VAR must have gave him like the wrong angle. Well, angles. there was there was two angles. The first angle he gave him, it was like right, it's definitely a penalty. But then he done this second angle, like towards like near the uh, corner flag, and it looked a bit like he touched it. But then if you look close, it still shows that he pushed or his foot pushed or touched um, the attacker's foot, and so the attacker's foot hit the ball first. So. Fabinho's foot is hit his foot. It's yeah, a penalty. The, the one I think I saw on social media was it was behind them. Obviously, they yeah, were going to sure run behind. Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. one. And but it slowed it right down. You can literally yeah. see Fabinho kick through his foot to get the ball. I don't know how it wasn't a penalty, but yeah, then obviously I mean, Jurgen Klopp decided to moan that their goal shouldn't have counted with apparently a clear push on Salah. I think oh, it was yeah, apparently fair on Salah. He's definitely <laughs> pushing the back. His two hands in the back. It's you push, are joking. Are you on about the one where they scored? You can't yeah. put two hands on someone's back. Did you, not see, did you not see his reaction like 10 seconds after? Yeah, but he, are you telling me you can put two hands on someone's back and not a foul like that? But you, you, can put, you can put your hands on them as long as you have no force on it. He clearly he did, though. He said, God, no, no, he didn't, Joel. That's he a, he salad jumped salad, like man. three seconds after he had his hands on him. It was such a late reaction. Um, it was not a foul. I don't know. I guess that's the problem the refs there as well. Then, like, if we can debate over it, maybe that's why he's done that as well for both decisions. Yeah. That's where they are. That's like it's not like going on technology. Is it? It's all about opinion. Still, still a human yeah. thing. So, because that's the other side of it. But I believe Spurs are still top of the table. If I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think Leicester as well. They won against Brighton three 0 James Madison yeah. scored a really nice goal as well. I think Vardy scored as yeah. well. So things looking up for them to do one in Europe. I think they drew against, they got drawn against Slavia Prague. Slavia Prague. Europe. Yeah. I think that's going to be an interesting game. But uh, elsewhere, Dortmund sacked Lucien Favre after they lost 5 1 against Stuttgart. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Stuttgart, they've, they've done well this season after they got promoted. They're like fifth, I think. So. It's not, it's not the worst team to lose to, but 5 1 at home, and it's had, they haven't been going well for them recently as well. So he's been sacked. And PSG also dropped points in our third in league, and I think Leo are top. But the worst part of that is Neymar got injured in that the 96th minute. Yeah. So, so. It says okay, though. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's what He's only out for like 10 to 15 days. Oh, really? Yeah. He was crying. I thought he was. But proper, yeah, he's then, crying. This good French journalist came out and said, First scans are good. He's only should be out for two weeks. What was it his ankle oh, again? Jesus. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, we're back to that basket and uh, work. And then, one other point I want you to bring up is um, I don't know if there's in the United, one United podcast. We talked about this in the last episode that we had. It was Mourinho versus Pep. Which one better? And the comment was if Mourinho wins the league with Spurs, does that outright just put him much better than Pep? Yeah. I think he's, be- I think he's better anyway. He is. I'm just saying anyway. that from a Tottenham fan. Look at his credentials. Pep mm. had to do it. If anything, right, Pep has had success at both Bayern and Man City. But if you think about it, he's also had, like, it weren't really that successful. Like, Man City... They like you know how Liverpool they got a Champions League they they didn't really care after they just wanted league 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 Man City need that Champions League he ain't getting anywhere near the Champions League he done the same with Bayern got nowhere near it that's why they he got there no yeah, he got three semi finals with Bayern yeah but he never got it he, that was a failure in in Europe he's not very good in Europe the thing is with Pep he's done it at big clubs. Mourinho has as well, but he's also done it at, no offence to Porto, but you wouldn't really expect them. The What he did with that Porto team is amazing. Um, to be honest, 
you could probably even say Chelsea as well at first. Oh, yeah. I know. I agree. He got much. Yeah, because I'm not going to lie, Chelsea, they're a big club, but they weren't like what people think they are nowadays. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was at the start yeah. of it. Um, so for me, it is Mourinho. Mourinho did win the league with Tottenham. I think it was 100%. Whoever wins the league with Tottenham is like, I'd put him over Fergie. That's how good. For Tottenham to win the league, that is mental. Little too far. For him, I think. No, it's not too yeah. far. You try winning the league with Tottenham, you're fucking shit. Little too far. You yeah. try to part you saw a Michael Carrick in midfield and then come back to come back to. Yeah. What did you just say about Michael Carrick? I said win the league with Park G Sung and Michael Carrick in the midfield. Oh, and then you're you're dissing it. Michael Carrick. He, is, he, was, a he was a good player, player. but late, later on in his career, no. Nah. He wasn't even that late on his career when he won it. I was only joking about the Ferguson because he is the best, but I would have Ferguson have won the league with Tottenham? I still would have said no. Well, I don't think Mourinho would do it anyway, but if he did, yeah, he is better than Pep. Jack, would you agree? Yeah. Especially after winning, like like Tom said, look at his whole career, winning Champions League with Porto, <coughs> brilliant at Chelsea, okay at Man United. But then if he wins the league with Tottenham, then it will just... Round Even at um, Real Madrid, um, Mourinho beat Pep's prime yeah, boss to the title. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I yeah but part. again, you could say he played in Champions League there because he had Ronaldo, Benzema, Ozil, I think Kaka as well at one point. He had, so, and, I, yeah. and I personally think, in my life at least, Pep's boss was the best team I've ever seen. I don't have the place to do it, but you still, you still need a manager to do it as well, don't you? Yeah. So, Agreed. I, yeah. I would say, yeah, if he wins with Spurs, then maybe it is a bit more, or a lot more in favour of Mourinho. No, yeah, I think if he there. wins it with us, it's, it's 100%. There's no argument. There's no, there's no, I'm, as a Tottenham fan, if you would have told me we're getting the league title, we'd laugh in your face. Because that's just how it's been. The thing is, um, Pep's never really done a, um, he's never done like a rebuild or anything either. He's kind of just, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. With winners. Yeah, be well, win, yeah. you? When we sack Mourinho, we'll bring in Pep and then we'll compare it and see how they do. <laughs> and yeah, with Pep, you, you can say, yeah, he doesn't really rebuild, but he gets backed, but then he does do well with that backing as well. It's not like he gets backed and doesn't perform because yeah. he has one mode for Leeds SC, which you still have to do after you get backed. Mm. He did have buy did I think he won every league bar one, which club won with Dortmund. And then... Barca as well. I mean, the only reason he got Barca say sacked him because the players couldn't handle him anymore. Like he was too determined to win, and the players just got sick of it. And now, now I'm sure they're regretting. So I think they're two great managers. But yeah, if Mourinho pulls us off, then I don't know, yeah, I think Tom's right. I think yeah, it has to just go to him. But, yeah, it's not um, a lot between them. It's just yeah, just like a little bit. That Porto and into Champions League really helps Mourinho out, I think. Yeah. But yeah, um, unless you guys have anything to talk about, I think that is all for this week. So yeah, um, that's it. Have a nice. Before I think it's time to talk, I think it's time we sit down and just say what's going on. I think we should say.